This is Ultimate Boulder. If you've played Druid at all this season, you'll know that shape-shifting is the way that everyone's going with their builds. So of course I threw all that away and there's no shape-shifting in this build. Shape-shifting tends to have the higher damage numbers on paper, but at the end of the day there's a lot of pauses and breaks in between things, and unless you really stay on top of the shape-shifting, you're gonna lose the bonuses between everything that you do. I made this build so that you don't have to worry about any of that, and I'll walk you through how we do it, but if you like my content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I make a ton of different builds, so there's something for everybody. So how does this build work? The primary reason that this build works is because of the unique item Dolman Stone. This makes it so that when you cast Boulder, while you have Hurricane up, the boulders will spin around you and you deal more damage per boulder that you have, up to 10 boulders. Not only that, but the amount of nature magic cooldown reduction that you can get on this item is insane. As you can see, I have a greater affix here, and it only has two bonuses into it. If I got three bonuses into this, that would be so much cooldown reduction. If that wasn't good enough, the movement speed while Hurricane is active is very nice, and the ranks to Crushing Earth are good too. Another key part of this build is the aspect called Metamorphic Stone. This aspect turns our boulder into a core skill. That means that it costs spirit now, but it doesn't have a cooldown. Not only that, but it increases the damage our boulders deal. And you can see on my weapon that I have three bonuses and a chance for boulder projectiles to cast twice. It's a very nice temper that you can get and it helps you ramp up your damage much faster. This is particularly important so you're not standing around casting as much. It also helps a lot if you hit suppressor or wall mobs that will cause your boulders to disappear. To be honest, even though suppressor and wall mobs have always been annoying to boulder builds, it actually doesn't feel that detrimental anymore. You can avoid the mobs temporarily and wait for the suppressor or the walls to go down, or you can just spam your boulder on the inside and kill them anyways. Another one of the most important parts of this build is the Mjolnik Ring. This has ranks to Endless Tempest, which increases the duration of both our Cataclysm and our Hurricane. Hurricane is needed for the Dolmen Stone, but Cataclysm is needed in order to maintain the spirit that you get from this ring. As you might have seen in the gameplay, I have 100% uptime on my ultimate. That means that I never run out of the spirit, not to mention the 100% damage multiplier. If that wasn't enough, we're also getting movement speed while Cataclysm is active, a fat chunk of critical strike chance, and willpower. Now everything else I show you is not required for the build, but they're all nice to have. So for example, Ring of Starless Skies gives a lot of damage, you get a lot of attack speed, a lot of critical strike chance, and ranks to core skills, but you can easily just run a normal ring in the place of this. Subterranean is a pretty good aspect that you can use up until you get this, and that'll give you a 30% damage multiplier. Another good item to have is the Crown of Lucian. This not only synergizes by having cooldown reduction on it, but it also ramps up to 75% damage. Now if you need the survivability, or if you need the extra cooldown reduction in order to get your Cataclysm up in time, you can always run a Harlequin Crest here instead. For the chest piece I'm using Tyriel's Might, and this is an amazing defensive item, but don't worry if you don't have this, you can easily wear a legendary chest piece, and I would opt for any type of damage reduction, but feel free to use whatever defensive aspect works the best in your situation. On the gloves I'm running Retaliation, and this is just a nice damage boost. You're going to want to make sure you get ranks to core skills on your gloves because this applies to boulder after we've changed it to a core skill. Gloves won't have ranks to boulder like it has other core skills because it's not inherently a core skill. Also you can see that most of my gear is only masterwork to 8 and this is just my first time to 8 so I actually don't have my bonuses in the correct spots. So this build will be insanely strong once I actually optimize it really well. On the pants I'm running undying. This isn't completely necessary. And I'm actually going to be replacing my weapon with a life on hit, so I might end up replacing the undying with something else. But again, whatever defensive aspect fits into your playstyle the best is what you should go with. For example, if for some reason you didn't get enough armor, you could always run a juggernaut or a disobedience until you do. 
on my boots, of course, we're getting ranks to boulder. And these are actually my best item. <laughs> of course, you want all your bonuses when you masterwork to go into boulder. And on the tempering, I actually got unlucky and didn't get Digitigrade Gate. Movement speed is fine as well. And we get so much movement speed from Dolmen Stone and the Mjolnik Ring that it doesn't really matter too much. But if you're really trying to maximize every bit you can get, Digitigrade Gate is going to be a better choice here because we use Blood Howl fairly often. But on bosses, movement speed will be more consistent. And I actually just realized that I don't have my ballistic aspect on these boots. So that's actually two ranks of boulder I didn't have for all of the preview footage at the beginning of the video. Now for the weapons implicit, you can either go with overpower damage or vulnerable damage. But I was actually also considering going with a staff because you get more attack speed. And none of these implicits are particularly good. Two-handed axes right now for some reason have damage over time on them. So realistically, I probably prefer the overpower damage. But it's kind of a toss-up because vulnerable damage has such a low range. For the gems, you're going to want to go with ruby on your armor, sapphire on your weapon, and on your accessories, as always, you're going to want to check your resistances. Make sure that you're capped. If you're not capped, you can run diamond or whatever color you need the most of, and then run skulls for everything else. But you only need enough armor to hit the armor cap, which is 9,230. So if you have excess over that, it doesn't really matter what you put. For the spirit boons, I'm running wariness, iron feather, avian wrath calamity and obsidian slam obsidian slam is extremely powerful in this build when you're doing things like infernal hordes or nightmare dungeons you're gonna see this popping off all the time it changes your average hits from 20 to 30 mil to closer to 200 mil for the skill tree you just need to get two points into any basics so you can move to the next area we're maxing out wild impulses for damage you can go shred instead of blood howl if you really like the dashes but I actually found that I'm better off running around and pushing enemies in a more controlled way than I am by dashing. You actually lose DPS by dashing and not hitting the enemies correctly. I'm also taking Earth and Bulwark with one extra point so we can go unstoppable. Blood Howl with the attack speed increase. We're maxing out Vigilance for that damage reduction. Maxing out Nature's Reach for hitting enemies further away. We're taking one point in Poison Creeper, and that's just so the Poison Creeper can passively poison enemies. Plus, as we're playing, we can spam this whenever it's off cooldown, and it just helps us poison an AoE group of enemies even easier. We're maxing out Endless Tempest to get those extra ranks, but feel free to pull points out of here if you get to the point where you have so much cooldown reduction that you don't need this anymore. In my case, if I put on Harlequin Crest, I can pull these points out. But if I don't have Harlequin Crest on, then I have to use these. But if you're able to pull them out, you can put them into Resonance and get an extra 6% damage. Or you can put them into Quick Shift, and that can give you a little bit more damage. But I think that you're going to be better off with Resonance. You could also go the defensive route and put it into Defensive Posture. Realistically, Defensive Posture is probably your best option. We're also maxing out Bad Omen. And this is mostly so that we can get the Electrocution Damage Bonus, which is 20%. Same thing for our one point in Charged Atmosphere. This is just another way to get that electrocution bonus. I like Charged Atmosphere because when I walk into a boss room, I want to know that the boss is going to get hit by one of my lightning bolts right away. We're also taking Hurricane, and we're getting Savage Hurricane for the damage reduction. Of course, we're maxing out Boulder. As you can see, we have 21 ranks here, and we can actually get closer to 30 if we optimize everything perfectly. And we're getting Natural Boulder for the 20% critical strike chance. Because we've got this one point in Safeguard here, we're going to have Fortify up all the time. We're going to be maxing out Stone Guard for some extra damage. We'll also be maxing out Invenom for even more damage. If you're running Shred, make sure you take one point in Toxic Claws so you can get additional poison on enemies. We're also going to be maxing out Defiance, Natural Disaster, and getting two points in Circle of Life. If you have a spare point, you can always put another point in the Circle of Life. And then we're going to get our ultimate Cataclysm and both additional points. And this is how we're applying Vulnerable to enemies all the time. Finally, for our Keystone passive, we don't have a lot of choices here but Ursine Strength is going to be our best one. If we were shapeshifting, we could do something like Bestial Rampage, but again, that gets back to that tedium that we don't want to deal with, which is shapeshifting. And the only other and the only other possibility would be Earth and Might, and I don't think the lucky hit chance is good enough on Boulder to even bother with this. So we're getting the 30% damage increase from Ursine Strength. For our Paragon boards, we're using Spirit on our starter board. We're going to be collecting all of the health that we can get on the entire board. We're going to be moving up from here, putting Constricting Tendrils on, and we're going to be grabbing the Outmatch Glyph here. Outmatch is a great glyph here because it maximizes our HP that we get. We are taking the Constricting Tendrils node here. And this is purely so that we can attempt to get more poison on enemies as we're doing damage. But realistically, our lucky hit chance is pretty low. So if you want to put these points into something else like damage, feel free. I don't think there's a more effective place to use these points somewhere else. 
but you could get extra points and a damage to crowd controlled enemies if you don't have enough on your gear. I did leave off one attack speed node. You could get a couple of nodes here if you really need extra armor, or just take a detour and get yourself a little bit more additive damage. To the right of Constricting Tendrils, we're putting the Earth and Sky Glyph, and that's on the Ancestral Guidance Board. Moving down from here, we're putting Earth and Devastation on, getting the Legendary Node, and here we're putting the Electrocution Glyph. Again, we're only getting this Glyph for the 20% damage multiplier. We don't actually benefit much from the Lightning Bolt damage. Moving down from here, we're attaching the Inner Beast Board, and here we're putting the Undaunted Glyph. We're moving down again from here, and we're putting the Dominate Glyph on. Now we're not dumping points into this Dominate Glyph, because realistically, we're just trying to make sure that we have the extra 15% damage to enemies when we overpower on them. Because our only sources of overpower are the 3% chance, and the overpower after we get 10 kills, it's not actually worth it to invest in this too much. But it's always worth it to try and get as much multiplicative damage as possible, so I think this is the best choice. Besides, you saw how hard some of those overpowers were hitting. Moving down from here, we're grabbing the Heightened Malice board, and we're just getting the Legendary node. And this is another reason why I had the Constricting Tendrils on there, because when I'm damaging multiple enemies, I want to have poison on as many of them as possible to make sure I'm getting this 45% bonus. Which is another reason why using the active on Poison Creeper is actually pretty useful. Now I should note that we have so much nature magic cooldown reduction that we're actually able to use Earthen Bulwark extremely quickly. You can see that my cooldown here is 5.48 seconds, and this is with Lucian on and not the Harlequin Crest. Considering this lasts for 3 seconds, we can actually get this low enough that it's almost permanent uptime without using any Symbiotic or Nature's Fury. That's just insane. It's also possible that you could put a defensive temper on your pants to try and reduce this even further, or increase the duration, which might be more effective. If you want to see a more detailed breakdown of everything I've talked about, make sure you click on the link underneath the video. That'll take you to my Mobilitix profile where you can see all of my builds, and if you go to this build specifically, you can see a breakdown of all of the stats, gear, and everything else. And I'll be sure to put out another video on this build once I get my gear more optimized. And I'll also let you guys know if I find anything that makes it even stronger. But let me know in the comments what you think. Would you prefer to have a build that might be slightly stronger, but much more tedious? Or do you like a build like this where it's very quick and easy to just get up and go? Also let me know if there's any builds I haven't put out yet that you'd like to see. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Daddy drew it out. So many balls spinning around me.